Have you started like me with one smart device? And over the years, you actually started accumulating more and more and more and more devices. Have you been also trying to fit them in, in every corner of your house that you can actually find? For me, it was getting a mess and I had to take action. I transformed my home cabinet from this into this home server rack right here. This has been a fun and challenging project I've been doing for over a month. And I want to share the whole journey with you. Every time I got a new device, I had to find where to put it and that was so stressful. I was really becoming a nightmare. I don't know how I managed to fit so much stuff in this cabinet. And we're expecting a new baby. We had to move everything out from this cabinet. I want to also share some of the mistakes that I've made over this project. For example, cutting this fiber cable over here so that you don't make the same mistakes. I purchased a 19 inch flat pack rack panel from Pen Alcom, which you'll find a link in the description down below. Specifically, I bought the 28U model that you can see over here. The guys from Pen Alcom kindly sent me a bunch of accessories to go with the rack that I was purchasing. I got a 1U shelf, a 2U shelf, a patch panel, a keystone panel, a satellite patch panel, a rack door, some nuts, a caster wheel. Two power units. These power units have a surge protector, so that will be give additional peace of mind for my devices. In addition, I purchased some toolless keystone jacks and some ethernet cables and some patch panels to complement it all. Now let's get our screwdrivers out and let's get going. First thing you're going to need to do is to list out all of your devices that are around in the house that are creating a mess start getting an idea of how much of a rack, how big of a rack you're going to need to get. I got a 28U rack, but the problem I had was the depth. So if you look at the space and this cabinet that I'm actually showing you and what I was actually replacing, there was a huge difference in terms of space. So you're gonna to have to measure up your space as much as possible, allow for ventilation, and also think about accessibility and actually getting to the cabinet and to the devices that you will be wiring in. I really didn't have much choice in the location. I had to pick that location where all the ethernet cables were already coming in. But if you're building a new home, it's actually a great opportunity to think of where your central location is going to be. The rack that I got has two side panels and a front door and a top and a bottom. You can also get a back panel if you wish. That's going to be a little bit of an additional cost and also might reduce ventilation. So that's really up to you. I decided to not get it and have a empty space at the back. The rack is really easy to mount and I'm not really good at DIY, trust me. You got four pieces to really, two base pieces, which you can see are square pieces over here and two rectangular pieces, which are the vertical pieces that you need to stack up. Find the bottom piece and I would suggest you put some cardboard underneath so you sort of protect the surface that you're working on. I prefer to work on a table if you can, or if not, just walk on the floor, depending on, on your back. And the first thing you need, you need to do is you need to align the vertical panel with the uh, bottom panel and look at those holes and ensure they all align together. Now, I actually got my dad to help and he, as he was around for the Christmas period. So we actually did this together. So he was holding it in while I was threading the screws in and um, look carefully at the screws and the little uh, bolt and bolt them in quite nicely. If you're actually uh, on tight on space, you might want to actually use uh, a little bit of some pliers. Be careful to not actually scratch the rack. Um, so use some care over here. So once you've tightened up one side, then focus on tightening up the other side. You don't really need to tighten up 100% of this stage. Get it stable enough so it doesn't flop. Get the other one done. Same process, align the holes. Once you've got all of that done at this stage, what you really want to do now is to flip it down. So you can flip it down so you can work on the bottom side of the panel. I've got these caster wheels that I'm using. And what we're going to do is basically is put them in, uh, put the four bolts and the screws in and screw them up all together. Now the quality of these uh, are really, really amazing. You can also get a version of plastic which is going to be a bit cheaper. However, I want it to be really solid. The downside of these is that they stick quite up a lot. And I'm not sure if there's something that we're doing wrong. We tried to flip it around the screw, but then that was blocking the wheel turning around. So these are quite long bolts. So you might want to get shorter, shorter bolts or actually 
uh, cut them off if you can, if you have the tools. We didn't have the tools on hand and we were doing this in the evening. So we didn't really want to wake up the whole family. So we just left it as is. Just There's a little bit of an inconvenience there if you're trying to put things flat on no. the bottom of the rack. Now that we've got the bottom panel and the wheels done, we can sort of flip it back up and have it upright and we can put the top panel, which will work in the same way as the bottom panel. It will align with the same screws, screw them all in. And now it's time to really just double check all your screws, tighten it all up and you should have a, a semi-solid structure. Now the structure might be not be 100% solid, you might have a little bit of flex. The reason of that is because the when you put the accessories in, it will make it a lot more solid. So don't worry at this stage. If you do have the door, I really recommend putting the door at the end after you put all of your accessories in and everything else. Um, stack it up as much as you can and then put the door in. Because I have wheels and where I'm actually uh, mounting this uh, somewhere else, not actually in the cabinet, so I have a lot more space and I can do this project without rushing and when I have time in the evening. The next phase, if you haven't done it already, is to start planning out your rack. Now, this you could do this with a piece of paper or there's some tools online where you can actually do this. And also, remember to like and share this video if you're getting value out of it. The cool thing with racks is that you can mount things at the front and at the back. So I didn't really realize this before actually having a rack and that gives you a lot of flexibility. So you can have your power units either in the front or you can have your power units at the back. I've actually got two of them in terms of the accessories. You want your heaviest devices to be at the bottom and you want your lighter devices to be at the top. Ideally at the top, you want to have your networking and your patch panel coming inside. You also want to have, and this is something that I will be doing in the future when you have a, if you have a rack mountable router and a switch, and a patch panel, you wanna to try to have the patch panel in the middle between the two. So you can sort of loop those cables in quite neatly. That's gonna be part of my next project when I'm actually gonna be doing my net, redoing my whole networking again and getting it all connected up. And you'll see that in a future video. Let's move on to accessories. And this is where the fun actually begins. A must for in terms of accessories is an ethernet patch panel. The ethernet patch panel comes in really two uh, types, the punch down version where you take your Ethernet cable and you hardwire and punch down the cables or you can have a keystone jack. So I have a toolless keystone jack which I use with my Ethernet cables and wired it all up. And not only you can have Ethernet but you can also have, have things like HDMI for example. Now the reason why I use keystone is because the cables come a bit short and they were, you, they were cut in a way that terminated really well with the old cabinet, but the new cabinet has been a little bit bigger. The cables were not just reaching. So I've had this customized solution where I would cut cables up and terminate them with some patch panels to actually allow me to move the rack slightly to the left or the right or pull it out, get better access to uh, my kit. Now the downside to that is that every link you have is a potential point of failure in terms of internet connectivity and you need to ensure that everything is actually terminated properly and you've got to test all of your cables, which I did and so far so good. In addition, get yourself a couple of rack shelves like I have. Now don't actually put stuff straight on top of um, servers or other rack mountable equipment because the day that you actually want to move that out, you have, you have everything falling down. So please get yourself some shelf. The shelves that I got are punch ventilated shelves, as you can see. The one you occupies three holes, and the two you is gonna be a bit bigger for heavier equipment, and it's also uh, larger, so you can put bigger equipment at the back also. On my one U shelf, I've got a Home Assistant server, I've got a Philips U bridge, a Zignito bridge, I've also got a Tando bridge, I've got all the stuff, little things over there. And on the shelf below, the bigger shelf, I've got my QNAP NAS, Synology, and my Amber NAS. So doors don't really come as standard. They're an accessory. And if you want them, you can get them in two different types. The one I got is the perforated type. However, it works really well. I think it keeps all of the kit nice and, and ventilated. You also have a couple of keys for added security to keep those little hands out of your stuff. And also I've added a little bit of smart tech, why not? So I've added an LED light strip to give it a bit more um, color and, and light so we can actually troubleshoot and maintain and see what's going on in the rack and give it a bit of a cool effect. And I also got this IKEA button. The main automation I have, my smart home automation that I'm running with Home Assistant, when the actual door opens, I have an Akara contact sensor 
and that will open up uh, and turn on the LED light strip. The LED light strip specifically comes from Ajax Online and it's a Zigbee LED light strip. The button I got from Ikea is gonna enable me to override that on it so I can turn on and off the light and it's got a little magnet at the back so it allows me to attach it and move it around as I wish. I've also got a little non-tech accessory, a little coat hanger right there on the right hand side, you know, because you, can, you need to hang your coat somewhere. This is just a start import from a new smart home rack. I'll be adding many more things to it. I'm also gonna be using it for experiments that I'm gonna to bring to this channel. But if you want actually an extended version of this video, you can jump onto my courses platform where you will find this and more videos related to racks, NAS, smart home, dashboards, home alarm systems on my platform. You can actually sign up to the platform and it's 14 days free to actually try out and see if that's something that you actually get value out of. Obviously links are in the description down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and now I'm gonna leave you with my home networking video which you can click right here. I'll see you in the next one. This is Joe from Smart Makers. Ciao.